Thank you for watching. You know, millions of people are thinking about Jesus this week. We are reflecting on the final days before he was crucified and the final words that he spoke while he hung on the cross. While Jesus suffered intensely, the Gospel of John records the third of seven statements that Christ made in the cross. His last words. His first words after the hammers had stopped pounding were words of loving forgiveness. He looked down and he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Luke 23, verse 34. He then responded to the last minute cry of a guilty thief hanging right beside him. Despite his own tsunami of suffering, the second cry from the cross was to that repentant thief. Here's what he said, Luke 23, verse 43. He said to the thief, truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. These cries from the cross provide insight into the very heart of God and confirm what the poet wrote in Psalm 86 and verse 5. Here's what that verse says. For you, Lord, are kind and ready to forgive, abounding in faithful love to all who call on you. Psalm 86, verse 5. This was the Lord's heart, AD 33, and that's how he feels towards you this very day. Come with me again to the cross. It was surrounded by mocking enemies and hardened Roman executioners. But there was one small cluster of sympathetic grieving hearts near the cross. Among them was one disciple, just one. His name was John. And just one from his family, his mother, Mary. Mary's other sons and daughters had turned against Jesus. They didn't believe his claims that he was the Son of God. The incredible miracles that he performed didn't even convince them. They were unbelievers. It was a broken, fractured family. I don't know how your family is doing this Easter, but Jesus knows the deep heart-wrenching pain of a family in crisis. Have you ever wondered if Jesus cares about your pain? John records the next cry from the cross this way. It's John chapter 19 and verse 26. Looking at that small cluster of grieving people at the foot of the cross, it says, when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple, that's John, took her to his own home. Mary was the vehicle that God chose to bring his son into the world. She herself talked about her own need to have a savior, someone to spiritually rescue her. She mentions her own personal savior in Luke chapter one. She says, God, my savior. Oh, how personal. Friend, let me ask you, who is your savior? The Lord Jesus was deeply pained to see Mary standing alone with no family member to comfort her. Lovingly, he said to her, woman, behold your son. And he committed her future care to John the disciple. Earlier in the week, on Tuesday, Jesus asked the religious leaders this question. Matthew chapter 22, verse 42, what do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? And by the way, Tuesday was a, a very busy day for Jesus as he engaged the people and the religious leaders for one 
final time. It was his last day of public teaching and interacting freely with the people in Jerusalem. He told multiple parables that Tuesday, and he used illustrations that day. He prophesied about end times. He issued a heart-wrenching, solemn lament to Jerusalem over its rejection of him. Friend, there is nothing more tragic than one's rejection of Christ. But as this third video in an eight-part series concludes, I want to ask you the same question that Jesus asked that Tuesday. What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? So was Jesus just the son of Mary? Was he just a descendant of King David? Or was he more? This Easter, there is not a more important question for you to answer correctly. What you think of Christ determines your eternal destiny. The single difference between the person who goes to heaven and the one who perishes is the value they place on Christ. Those who just know about him, that he was a great historical figure, a true humanitarian, a teacher of high ethics, people who only value Jesus that way, they are not on the way to heaven. Those who believe he died for their own sins and have personally embraced Christ by faith as their savior and they value him that way, they are the ones who will be in heaven. What about you? What value do you place on the Lord Jesus Christ this Easter? Thank you again for watching.